Good evening. Welcome back to the Glasoff Gang. My gang members this evening for this second segment, Lisa Daftari, Middle East expert and journalist, Austin Dragon, political analyst, and Ben Shapiro, Shulman Journalism Fellow at the David Horowitz Freedom Center. During our break, it got very heated here. There's a lot of disagreement among our panel. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we discussed uh, Herman Cain and some politics in the first segment. I want to move over to the Middle East. Lisa, I want to begin with you because I know that Iran is very special to your heart. Let me begin with this. The Arab Spring, Barack Obama very supportive, uh, apparently, and by all, by all sites. And, uh, but it, it seems to be paving the road to Sharia and to the Muslim Brotherhood taking power. But when we saw the Persian Spring several years ago in terms of a real democratic movement in Iran, the Iranian students on the street, a lot of people felt that our, even our own president betrayed those students. How did you see what happened in Iran and, and what's happening in Iran today? Right. Because I think it's the best hope for the Middle East. Right, right. And then, I mean, you nailed it. The biggest threat to the Iranian regime is not Barack Obama, it's not NATO, it's not the UN, it's its people. It's 70 million people who want this government out and they've wanted them out since the first day. This government, 30 years ago, hijacked this revolution and took power and they have such a strong... Uh, you know, chokehold on, on, on the regime that, you know, the, the people see no hope in sight. So when they put their lives on the line and they went out into the streets in the post-election uprisings in 2009, they thought that they would look to the West and get some help. They thought they would get some sympathy. Why not, you know, team together and get them out? The West obviously has, obviously has a problem and has a, uh, you know, uh, issue with their nuclear program and there's a, it's a global threat. And they're not, you know, the, the, the Barack Obama was not willing to step up and shoulder the... Lisa, during that time, if the West had conducted itself, let's say, properly or more effectively, was there a possibility that during that it could have occurred and the mullahs would have been overthrown? Absolutely. Do you, who do you fault? Do, do, do you see that it was a betrayal on the part of the Barack uh, Obama administration? Absolutely. I mean, part of the, you know, it, it's not hocus pocus. You can't just create revolutions, right? Mm -hmm. But, I mean, especially once, I mean, in 2009, when, when our administration did not help the Iranian people, we thought, all right, maybe it's not as easy as we thought, and there's more behind the scenes that we're not, we're not aware of. Mm -hmm. But when you're looking at all these people putting their lives on the line and going out into the streets and doing exactly what the people mm -hmm. in Syria did, what the people in Libya did, what the people in Egypt did, I mean, and I will, I will say, Iran's uprisings in 2009 were even more widespread than, than what happened in Tahrir Square. Yeah, you know, I, I will why say... Why was it that the first day that the Egyptians came out and went into Tahrir Square, Barack Obama had to be on TV saying, oh, Mubarak's got to step down. Our best friend in the Middle East, yeah. our biggest ally in the Middle East has to step down. And look what's happening in Egypt now. Exactly. I have to say that as the son of Soviet dissidents, I can say this, that even during the Reagan era, that the persecuted people behind the Iron Curtain, they still had hope when they knew that Reagan was behind them, when, when people say we're right. behind you, but I think Barack Obama failed to speak That's exactly. very important. That's exactly. A lot of Iranians say exactly yeah. that. It's the moral support that if he had... Even some just, words. Just some words. Just some words. And it came, but it came too late. Yeah. Now, now, some people say that that might have backfired if America had stepped in verbally, that maybe it would have backfired that it was like an American-supported uh, movement or something. Austin, how do you see what's happening in Iran and what Lisa's, pers and Lisa's perspective? Yeah, I agree. I think we, we, we definitely missed an opportunity, but, you know, one of the problems with the Middle East being with, with all of the many things happening there, you really don't know if you pull this thread here is what's going to come out on the other side if you pull here if you intervene here what's going to happen it, it's a very touchy situation but there was but a moral uh, duty to stand behind I, I those totally students agree. i absolutely agree and it, it really shows that you have someone who is really unsure of his the the, the power of his office mm. and what is really possible and it, it almost seems like, well, let me step back, let me see what the polls say, and before I, I actually, you know, step up, there isn't really that kind of internal, I'm going to be a leader, I'm going to step out, and I'm going to show what's... You know, On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the worst, 10 being the best, how do you rate Barack Obama in terms of understanding foreign affairs and conducting himself on foreign affairs? Wow. Can I use negative numbers? <laughs> I was thinking, ben, yeah, I knew so. ben, ben Shapiro, Iran. I mean, it, it's clear. Look, we, we put we put actual planes in the sky bombing things in Libya, right? We were we were providing money and arms to a lot of the people in Libya, 
um, we weren't doing anything in Iran. And, and I, I truly believe, I have a, a view of Barack Obama that, that he's not just ignorant. I mean, I think there's something a little bit more nefarious going on, which is that I think that he has a lot of sympathy for the folks who are uprising against these regimes, and he does not believe, as a general matter, in the notion of American power as a yeah. leading force in the world. Yeah. I don't think that he likes America being the leader in, in the leadership position. He truly believes in what Woodrow Wilson thought he believed, right? He believes in this League of Nations ideal, mm -hmm. and Obama wants to be a global leader without being an American leader. Mm -hmm. And so what, what that means to him is minimizing American influence in the world, and everyone's treated equally in this kind of morally relativistic world. So he's, he's turned the Arab Spring, which could have been something great, into springtime for Hitler. And that, that it's clearly what he's done. I mean, it, what we are watching now is the greatest Islamist revolution, uh, certainly in the last 150 years. In that years. whole region. Yeah, the, and, the entire region. And, and you're faulting Obama for it. Uh, it oh, well, yeah. It, 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 he, he started this by going to Cairo and, and bringing the Muslim Brotherhood into the fold in Egypt. He emboldened those folks. And then when he... I mean, this didn't start in Egypt. It started in Tunisia. It's like bringing Nazis into it. To well, when it's, it, exactly. I mean, it, he, when he he started in Tunisia, right? I mean, the the, the leader of Tunisia, who was a, not a good guy, but was a secularist, right? Did not get any sort of support from the United States, and he wasn't. And he and, and when the Islamists started rising up against, it was very clear what was going to happen. There, and Obama didn't make any sort okay, of ben, decision. Okay, Ben. One to uh, ten. Report card. <laughs> foreign affairs. Understanding and conduct. I mean, I agree. I mean, it, Negative numbers as well? Uh, he, there are not numbers low enough <laughs> for this man. Lisa. He's, he's a disgrace to the United States. Lisa, he's, you're he's Lisa. a disgrace. Like, you know what? You just made up for saying that you were. Okay. That? <laughs> yeah. 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 That's the only reason why I would rather have Mitt Romney as President of the United States. No, Lisa, your policy. report card on a scale of 1 to 10. I mean, is also my negative job numbers? revolves around <laughs> the reporting on the Middle East, so... You know how I feel about him. <laughs> I want to move over to Iraq and Libya for a second, but just before I go, a lot of people say that look, even the the you know supporters of George W. Bush and that they had to go into Iraq, etc. I know this is a little bit of a blurry area, but some say if there had had to have been an intervention, it should have been in Iran and not in Iraq. I mean, I Where do you guys stand on that, Lisa? Well, at least look with the what's going on in the Iraq situation. I mean, it's a lot of the issues are because of the people there, the insurgencies there, right? So with Iran. We're, we're absolutely certain that the people would support such an ev invasion or such a... Really? Like, what, if, if we're going to topple the regime in Iran, the people, of course, would support it. Mm -hmm. Right? Whereas you're going into Iraq, you took down Saddam Hussein, which now it looks like, oh, Saddam was actually great for the Iraqis. Lisa, do, do the Iranian people have a good chance of overthrowing this despotism? By themselves? Yeah. I would like to think that they do, but it doesn't seem that well, way. Well, there's right? some there's some things they need: the moral encouragement and support from the West, even verbally, mm -hmm. right? And then I guess we can get into the details of. They need to be blockaded. They need, they need organization. I think that's been uh, you know the the one mm -hmm. thing that all Iran experts talk about. I mean, the Iranian people are not organized. They don't have. I mean, thir 32 years ago when the Shah was toppled, I mean. You know, Khomeini had his constituency, he brainwashed a lot of people, the mob was like, okay, we'll have Khomeini come in and then we'll think about what we're going to do yeah. next, right? But now there's no one leader or one group to look to, right? So that's where the United States, they want to help behind the scenes, help support a, a, a an alternative to this regime, help bring someone in. I mean, what message is our government giving Tehran? We're telling the mullahs, Look, if you be our friend, we're, we're not going to, I mean, with, with Mubarak, he was our friend, we took him down. With Gaddafi, he shook hands with Clinton, we took him down. I mean, and now it's like, you know, Barack Obama extended his hands to uh, the mullahs. They said, no, the only chance we have left in toppling this regime is to go after and help the people. Okay, we have two minutes left in this segment. Um, I want to get to the, the surrender in Iraq. Austin. 4,500 approximately American soldiers gave their lives. American blood, American treasure, the sacrifices of Iraqis. It seems to be a situation where Barack Obama is coming up to Iran and now saying, we're out, you can have Iraq. Is this a disgraceful surrender or is nation building quicksand and the sooner we get out the better? How do you see it? Unfortunately, I mean, I, it's a really difficult uh, question to answer because uh, I, I actually fault President Bush the elder because I felt we should have went in then and I think one of the problems we had in terms of stabilizing Iraq during George Bush was that we told, oh, George Bush elder said rise up, rise up and they did and we weren't there to, for the, you know, to, have to come and defend them. So I, I would say in terms of Iraq um, if we have a president or a commander in chief who doesn't want to support them, I'd say pull our troops out. I don't. I just don't. Being in the military myself, 
I don't see him as someone who's really going to be... In other words, the Vietnam shows. situation, you either fight to win or you get exactly. out. And since we have a leader that doesn't want to win, let's get out. Let's but if there was a leader that wanted to win, Ben? I mean, I certainly agree with that. You either have to fight to win or you have to get out. Is it a mistake to get out the way Obama's leaving? Well, I mean, I think it's a mistake because there's nobody to fill the gap. But by the same token... Except Iran. Well, right. I don't, and, and that's really the problem, right? I mean, if, if Iran's not there, then this is not a big deal. But I think the problem is that... I, I mean, I just do not believe in you break it, you bought it. I don't believe in Colin Powell's doctrine. I think we should knock over the bad guys. If another bad guy comes up, we knock him over, too. A discussion should always end with the wisdom of Lisa Daftari. <laughs> That's where goes to you. You know, it's it's uh, it's tomorrow's Veterans Day, so this is really a timely topic to to talk about right now. I think you know, in the case of Iraq, we are certain that Iran's hovering and and waiting to come in. They've been meaning to get even the score with Iraq for 30 years now, and we're giving them, we're handing on a silver platter the opportunity for them to do so. With Syria, I'm, I'm sorry, with Egypt we saw it, with Libya we saw it, and with Tunisia we saw it, when you know, the, the, those hovering forces were even not as apparent, but there was a political vacuum, and they swooped right in. With, Ira with Iran, we know that they exist. Okay. We are absolutely certain, so why would we give it to them and walk out? Lisa and Austin has been a little bit back in your good books in this segment as well as in the first segment. <laughs> 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 we've come we've come to the end we've come to the end of our second segment of the Glass Off Gang. Join us for the last and final one tomorrow evening where we discuss is Europe lost. See you then.